I'm working on a, I'm working on a project related to getting burgers in a helicopter. <laughs> so I gotta I gotta convince some more of my pilot friends uh. to uh, sign up for that one. The problem everyone's got the same problem. It costs money to fly. Sure. Well, we're crossing Interstate 90, which goes from Seattle to Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, of course, it's the main right of way across the state today. Uh, but there's an old Sunset Highway history and a bunch of other early roads that tell us a nice story about getting across the state. And it's such an impressive transect to go from the wet side of Washington to the dry side. And of course, us geologists prefer the dry side where we can see all this stuff. Yeah. I did a photo flight with um, some guys from the uh, Grant County PUD down here. Okay. And we saw a cougar or something down in... in uh, oh, wow. I think the water was lower because I think it was the year that they had to make repairs to this dam up ahead. I see. We're coming up on the um, Wanapum Dam. Uh, the Wanapum Dam was in the news a couple of years back because they found a crack in one of the su supports. Uh, so what they did was they drained the lake uh, basically under us. They, we turned it back to being just a river, Columbia River, let all the water through, and uh, did some repairs on here. It took about a year and a half, I think, maybe as much as two years. And during that time, this part of the river was closed. There's some people walking out Couple there. Couple kayakers out there. Oh, okay. yeah. Looks like a nice place to hang out. Or canoeists, maybe, can't yeah, tell. Yeah, who knows. Uh, yeah, so we just saw the oldest uh, dam on the Columbia. This is one of the newest, uh, or 1960, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that for the Wanapum Dam. Early 60s, I believe. And, uh, you know, uh, so we're not seeing the natural state of the Columbia River, but there's been plenty of benefits for these uh, dams to be put in, so. One of the things that um, I like to brag about to my friends is the fact that because we've got so much hydropower here in Washington, we also got some wind power, um, although it's not really very close. I mean, it's close, but it's not that close. Um, we have some of the cheapest power in the country, and all summer long, my biggest electric bill this year and an all-electric house was $30. So, you know, that's, um, that's pretty good, and it makes you feel good to know that it's renewable. Um, these dams all have fish ladders. The fish can get beyond them. They, up here, the dams don't have locks, so these are lakes. You can't get a boat from one to the other. And this particular dam was uh, built on uh, Native American land, the Wanapum Indians, and I think that they've got um, uh, a tribal center somewhere around here. I have not been to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, the tribes and uh, uh, the earliest geologists in the area uh, were the Native Americans, and they were thinking about relationships like what we see straight ahead, like why would this river go right through this ridge like this? And they had an amazing story of a big fight between giant animals to blast a hole through these ridges and allow the rivers to go through. And I don't know those oral traditions as well as I'd like, but I'm getting to know some of the, the elders in some of the local communities to learn as much as I can. The point is, modern geologists view it the opposite way. We have lots of geologic evidence that the Columbia River is older than Saddle Mountains that the river was here first, and uh, these ridges have been growing on opposite right. sides of the river. Now that sounds like a Native American legend, a ridge growing, but in this case, we're sure of it, based on river deposits and the age of the faults and other kinds of things that I'm not sure we should get into right now, but this is Sentinel Gap, where the Columbia River has held its own against an uplifting Saddle Mountains. And the Saddle Mountains, um, have been lifting along a big fault line, which we're going to, I think, are we going to head over to the... Oh, uh, you want to be on this side? Oh, that's right, you want to be on this side of the mountain. Um, okay. Just yeah. a little bit, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'd like to get a good shot down that valley anyway. I'll just figure I'd go over the bridge and then make a turn. Great. Yeah, this is the old uh, uh, Milwaukee uh, train line that was put in in the late 1800s. And again, J. Harlan Brent was getting around by train more than anything else. But here we are looking up the north face of the Saddle Mountains, one of my favorite places in Washington for a number of reasons. One, the Ice Age floods came down this view. In other words, Ice Age floods came from the north, hit the north face of Saddle Mountains, and flowed this way towards the Columbia River. So there's all sorts of great evidence for that. Two, 
There's a tremendous fault called the Saddle Mountains Fault. It's right at the base. Do you notice how steep this is and how flat it is on, on the left side? Yeah. That's because this ridge has continued to lift and the valley has continued to drop over the last few thousand and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of years. And Crab Creek here has taken that path of least resistance and basically it's like the trap door is dropping on this face. We do not know the earthquake history on this fault. We don't know how often earthquakes have happened or how large the earthquakes have been. And it'll be nice to figure that out sometime soon before the next one happens. <laughs> but all these wonderful geometries on the right side here are a result of all this water coming off the front of a, a melting uh, Saddle Mountain summit and digging into these talus slopes and leaving all these wonderful little remobilized deposits. Too bad a lot of it's in the shadows. It's yeah. to do with the uh, angle of the sun. If we were coming through here in the summertime, uh, the sun would be on the more, shining more from the north. Yes. But this isn't so bad. I, I did not realize how much sand was here. I didn't either. That's uh, a nice shot. I used to uh, do some charter flying where I'd fly from Oh, let's see, Wenatchee, uh, straight down to an orchard on the other side of Saddle Mountain, way down, probably another, I don't know, 10, 15 miles from oh. here. We're not, not going to go that far. Um, so go straight across the uh, Quincy Basin there. Uh. Well, there's one more key thing to say here, and that up high on the right, you can see a couple of layers that are not brown, but they're white. They're yeah, light tan. Yeah, those. And, um, the top layer, which is white, is Ringgold Formation, and the Ringgold Formation on the other side of the valley is down low, so you can see how much the ground has lifted on this side. But the real exciting thing for us is that the obvious white layer that's not at the top has a real reddish top yeah, to it, so sure. that's about 30 feet thick. Oh man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose it again now. Don't lose excited. it, don't lose it. I'm so, um, this, uh, yeah, I never noticed this red layer up oh here. Oh my god. What is that from? So, this white layer is ash that fell out of the sky oh. from a super volcano explosion in Idaho, and the red is the it's next really lava good. flow coming in and welding the top of the white. Okay. The welded top of, oh my gosh, Maria! <laughs> Maria! Yeah. I just sit. met a pilot named Maria. Good it's almost Lord. yellowish underneath, too. Yes. So it's a, it's a discoloration, it's an alteration, and we tried our best to record it with a drone. We didn't get the shot that oh, you got. Oh, there you, you go. just got right there. Uh, drones just aren't oh, quite as good. Oh, God in heaven, that was wonderful. Well, we're gonna have, you're going to have some of that on your, your disc. So, <laughs> so look at how farm boring it is up here. Yeah. I mean, you can see how dramatic and how exciting and how scary that earthquake history is. And then here we are. I didn't realize it was so. I didn't realize this place was. Yeah, so I didn't realize it. Yeah, like I said, I usually cross it way down there, or I cross at the gap. And yeah. I usually cross right here. Oh wow. Yeah. I don't know if there's still anybody. You see any signs of life down there? Oh yeah. I see a decent, huh. well manicured house there. Yeah. Doesn't look like anybody's home though. Sometimes you gotta wonder. There. They're probably out shopping. <laughs> So, uh, the view straight out in front of us off the distance is the Hanford Preserve, which is in the news every once in a while, but not for good reasons. And uh, closer in, uh, before you get to Hanford, are some more uh, farms and ranches, and um, uh, this is all in Mattawa. So, uh, we're uh, basically going over the top of Saddle Mountain right now, and we're going to come back. We'll come back through the gap, I think. Good, if you don't mind, because yeah, no, that'd uh, be good. That, that same, uh, it's called the Cougar Point Tuff, that 30 feet of ash. This is the fire they probably had recently. You see where it's darker right here? Sure do. And then this red might be from the um, chemicals they throw down to I stop the I fire. Think they have retardants. Exactly right. Yeah, they, I had heard there was a fire out at Saddle Mountain. I guess this is where it was. And so what happens here in this fire, you can see there's nothing below us. It's like a moonscape almost. Um, it takes out all that grass and the little sagebrush. Uh, but I tell you, if I fly through here next year at the same exact time, you're not even going to tell there was a fire here. Because <laughs> it all comes back. Yeah. Um, even the sagebrush, it grows remarkably fast. Oh, it's too bad that it uh, looks like the, the uh, 
power lines were right in the path of it. Which means they're probably, there's some workers up there. You see the trucks. Oh, we have to check all this stuff. Wow, it came right off the road, right off the canal, up the hill. What happens is that the fire is starting and the wind catches them and just blows them. And orchards are a great stop for them because orchards are all irrigated. Uh, apple orchards have upper irrigation too, so they're being sprayed from the top, which can keep the trees wet. I don't know if these are apples or cherries. It looks, oh, actually, it looks like a vineyard. This looks like a vineyard under us. Well, it's big business out here, and uh, part of the reason for this great country is this is another big flood bar. So if you remember back in East Wenatchee, we had one of those big bars of sediments dropped by a big flood coming down the Columbia because the water slowed down on the inside of a curb. Same thing here. When the Ice Age floods came through Sentinel Gap, they did a big left-hand turn and they dropped what's called the Priest Rapids Bar. So, interesting parallel between the Battle area and the East Wenatchee area. Yeah, this is a huge fire. I didn't yeah. realize how big it was. It was big. I remember hearing about it. I, I don't fly down here all that often anymore. I used to come down here all the time. One of my clients had three different orchards to visit down here. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, I, would, <laughs> I would take him to a whole bunch of orchards in a day. Ah. It, it would take him, if he drove it, it would take him all day, literally all day, wow. to cover them. And we used to be able to cover it um, in the morning before lunch. Well, to set up this thing we're going to see in just a second, this is the little town of Mattawa off to the left. And uh, I used Mattawa quite a bit in a new lecture that I did this spring. And your viewers might be interested. If you go on YouTube and type in Super Volcanoes of the Pacific Northwest, it's a lecture that has been very, very popular just in the last few months. It's on YouTube? It's on YouTube. Yeah, I can link to it. And it's, it's this particular deposit that got me interested in this story. And so they were actually quarrying this 30 feet of ash uh, to make the dams on the Columbia River. If you add volcanic ash to concrete, it uh, enhances the concrete, something called poslin. The Romans figured that out a long time ago. And so the fact that scientifically we realized that this ash did not come from the Cascade volcanoes, but came from southern Idaho and related to the Yellowstone volcano, that's a whole different story and a much more regional story. So it's right up here on the right. If we can swing a hard right. Oh, here. I see where the white is. Yes. Yeah. This I should mention here, this area with the vineyards. Oh, this is called the Walux Slope. It looks yes. like the vineyards there were taken out by the fire, maybe. Oh. I don't know. Uh, and that's where a lot of the uh, grapes uh, for wines from Washington come from. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you're talking about this white. I am, here. yeah. So this, this white thing is 30 feet thick. It's real fragile ash that fell out of the sky 11.8 million years ago. And it's still with us because the Elephant Mountain lava flow was sitting on top of it for a long, long time. But the Elephant Mountain has peeled back. And so you can see that back in the mid part of the 20th century, they were quarrying this. That's why yeah. it's such a steep wall. And uh, studying the chemistry and the details of that ash ties it to a caldera and a supervolcano in southern Idaho, not the Cascades. Wow. I think that's super cool. I love the way they've got this orchard here with the tree, the wind blocks. Yes. Would not be fun to dry for cherry season, but... So I always get asked about the coverings. What, what's going on with that? Uh, when they cover, if they're covering apples, it's to shade them so they don't get sunburned, believe it I or not. See. If they're covering uh, cherries, it's usually a uh, cover all the way around, and that's to keep the birds out. Huh. So are there more birds here than other places, do you think? Uh, no, they ju these growers have more money. <laughs> ah. Because it's, it's very, very expensive to completely enclose, you know, a 10 or 20 acre parcel oh, sure. with netting. And it is oh. completely enclosed. This is probably cherries. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. It's got the sides up. I don't know what they're doing here. This side of the river is um, a military uh, training area. If I, in fact, if I went like another, I don't know, mile into the west here, yeah. I would be uh, violating um, an area of yeah. space that I'm not supposed to go in. So. Oh, that's why I don't go up in there. So uh, I think it's where the guys from um, Whidbey Island come down. When they come down Moses Cooley and they come down, I think they end up in here somewhere. I see. And the, the picture going in this direction now is a lot better. So yeah. um, we might talk about some of the stuff we already talked about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. It doesn't, uh, 
doesn't matter to me. I, I might, um, I'm just talking to the audience and to you at the same time, sure. is I might do a lot of editing here yeah. to um, take out, to use the best video. Um, Makes sense to me. We've been flying for, uh, geez, over an hour now, I'm pretty sure. Huh. Close to an hour now. And uh, it's going to be more than one video because sure. um, people... Um, people don't like to watch long videos, and I have learned that, so I try to keep them under 15 minutes. Okay.